football, Billy Gill. God bless football, Mikey A. God bless football, Mike Golick. God bless football and Notre Dame's women lacrosse, Stu. Wow. Really? You're going there that early in the uh, proceedings, huh? Listen, <laughs> you always have to be excited when you take down number one, right? If you're not going to be number one, beat number one. And yes. I am only going to focus on you, not your lovely daughter who plays lacrosse at, no at Northwestern. Thank you. Defending national champions. Mm -hmm. uh, but this happened, oh, what, about uh, two weeks ago. Uh, Northwestern went to Notre Dame as the number one team in the country, and Notre Dame smoked them. Yeah. 14 to 10, and it wasn't even that close. No. I, mean, I, I don't know if it was or not. I'm just saying that. But Notre Dame gets the win, baby. Yes, wow. in fairness to you, Notre Dame played very well. They outplayed Northwestern. They played like they wanted the game more, Mike. But I would only say this. Since that game happened, you have lost to Syracuse. You play North Carolina this weekend. And I will tell you what I say to, you know, professional athletes. Do it in the postseason, okay, Mike? How about this? Make it to the postseason, Mike. Wow. Listen, I am a what have you done for me lately? And right. lately, Notre Dame beat Northwestern. In the last game they played together, Notre Dame won. Because I was at the game before with you and your lovely wife, Abby, and me and my wife. We were yep. watching your daughter's freshman year. Notre Dame came, or Northwestern came in and uh, beat Notre Dame and gave you guys your kudos for You're that. Right. Went on to yep. win a national championship. And the next time you come to Notre Dame, uh oh, what happened? Mm -mm. Wow. Uh -oh. Yeah, we love Billy. What are you doing over there? I mean, <laughs> I'm just here. Yeah, I'm just an impartial observer. Mike, did you open your doors to the Stugatz family? Did they happen to stay at your house or no? We uh we don't allow losers uh to stay at our oh. house. So uh, <laughs> woo! He was uh, uh -oh. we, the, totally fair. No, listen, I deserve it. But then what are you doing staying there? I mean, yeah. Notre Dame hasn't won anything in football in years. I mean, <laughs> hey, 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 yeah. hey. <laughs> Notre Dame is a fencing school, okay? We have 13 uh, national championships <laughs> in fencing, so my we're a fencing are, school. <laughs> big fencer, are you? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> you don't let losers stay at the house. <laughs> you would let Rachel stay at the house before you let me stay at the oh, house, wouldn't you? I mean, yes. open invitation to either one of your daughters <laughs> or your wife, but you know. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, Mike, it's your favorite time of the year, scouting combine. <laughs> So I, I, I want to be careful with this because I I, I am not I, I am not a fan of the contextually of the combine and what it represents, which is from the end of, uh, of uh, uh, trying to be NFL players and end of their college uh, career from basically November to February, all they do is train for non football things i mean they're 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 training in a sprinting stance for a 40 that they'll never be in that stance again in their life they're doing verticals they're running around cones and we're judging people off of this i i don't fully <laughs> understand it but on the other side of that i listen as a player i went to the combine and i understand as a player this is your interview so uh, what i do want to see is players doing their all out best in whatever they're choosing to do to show that, Hey, the parts of the interview I'm going to do for you, I prepared for, and I'm ready to go. So this has nothing to do with the players and more to do with, and, and I know everybody doesn't, doesn't take all the different drills literally and say, Oh, because you know, this dude ran around three cones really fast. I'm going to up his draft stock. This should be used. I've always said to, we know who the top guys are. To me, nothing's going to really hurt them. This is going to be for guys you're not sure about. You see them excel in something, and it makes you go back and watch more tape on them because ultimately that's the deciding factor. The thing I do like about the Combine is the interviews, when you actually get to sit and talk to a player and get to not, not ask stupid questions, but just talk to a player and get a feel for them, especially for the quarterbacks when you can put them up at the board when you can talk about, you know, when they make visits to your team and you can give them part of the playbook, how do they digest it? I think all that stuff is important, but I'm sorry. I, who was I just, I was just with the other day. Um, one, a, for, a former coach talking about the combine saying, man, did we, we could care less what an offensive lineman ran a 40 in and having an old lineman right. run forties 
is the dumbest thing in the world to me because you're just begging for a hamstring pull. Yes. And why? Yeah. To watch right. a, a guy who never has to sprint 40 yards run 40 yards. If you want to get him in a 10, that's great. But a 40, it's a joke. So, sorry, that's just my spiel I do on the combine every year. Isn't that why the Jets drafted Makai Beckton? Because he ran yep. a really fast 40 time. And his, yes. And the, Fastest and his ever for a lineman. Be on the yeah. Jets next week, next <laughs> just, just, just blows my mind. Uh, again, right. blows my mind. Uh, I, I don't. I don't get it. Um, as I said, if you use it for markers, and I remember Bill Polian, the great Bill Polian, one of the great GMs we've seen in this league, talk about how he uses it as markers of marking points. But the but the problem with that is, is, is there are people that are shorter than your point that can play well. There are people that have smaller hand sizes than your mark that play well. I mean, you don't know. If you want to use that, as a measuring stick, okay, but I to downgrade somebody for that when if you watch tape and they look great on tape and you say, yeah, but he's about an inch and a half short, I'm like, are, are you shitting me? He looks good on tape. You know, that's the <laughs> bottom line, man. Right. Like, if you go play and go play. Mike, how many times did you run 40 yards on a football field in your life? I ran it uh, in high school one time when they timed us. Once, and, right. And, and this helped the – Listen, high school stats are a joke, right? I mean, again, I never played defensive line in my life. I was a 6'5", 245-pound linebacker my senior year, and I was a five-star first-team parade All-American and rated the best defensive lineman in the country, and I never played defensive line. So, I mean, it shows you how ridiculous it is. When we were running the 40s in high school, as the coaches were going down to the 40-yard mark, I moved up five yards. So I ran a 4-7. I ran a 4-7, 35-yard that they thought was a 45-yard. So all of a sudden, it's like, ooh, this guy can move. He's 240-something and runs a 4-7. I mean, ridiculous. So, I, guys, I didn't even run it at the combine because I had shoulder surgery after my senior year. I just went there to talk to teams and have the doctors look at me. I didn't do any of the – Sure. Things because I had shoulder surgery. So I ran it. Um, I never ran it when I got drafted by Houston. The only time I ran a 40 was when I was a free agent and I signed with the Dolphins. They timed you in 40s or before, you know, camp started, which I thought was somewhat ridiculous. So never, never. I mean, it's it's crazy. But on a football field in an actual game playing for the Eagles, Notre Dame, you would never run 40 yards, right? Ever. Occasionally, I would run 40 on a pursuit drill, which was right. a rarity. Uh, okay. You know, it, pursuit is more about the right angle. Speed is great. You got it. You got it. Um, but, you know, there, there's so much more. Rarely do you run a straight line 40 outside of wide receivers running go routes and DBs turning and running after, you know, they swing their hips you know, to run. Other than that, it just isn't happening. Uh, Billy, I got to tell you, that's pretty impressive to be ranked, rated the top defensive <laughs> lineman in his class and never play the position. That is talent right there, Billy. I mean. <laughs> I, or or massive hole in like the whole system. I would say. <laughs> yes, I, I lean toward a massive hole in the whole in the system. I mean, it's, that's the one. it's, it's just crazy. <laughs> my, my son, Jake, when Mike played in the Army All-American game his senior year, Jake went and did like an Army All-American combine for juniors. And Jake was rated one of the top tight ends in the country based off of that, right? So then Jake commits. Jake went to a camp as a sophomore and did really, really one of these camps as a sophomore did really, really well. So Jake was very highly rated. And then going into senior year, he committed to Notre Dame. So there were still these Nike camps and other camps, Adidas camps out there, dropped his rating for doing nothing. I mean, ridiculous. It's, it's ridiculous. It's just crazy. you got to play their game. It's, it's unreal. Yeah, but, Mike, it, the, the truth is if you're talented, they'll find you. They don't exactly care about the right. camps. If you're talented, they will find you and they will draft you. 1,000%. They will find you. Listen, this is a heavy cornerback, heavy offensive tackle, heavy quarterback. Those are three – money positions in the NFL, right? So you're going to see those and and some uh some top end edge rushers like Verse from Florida State, Turner from Alabama. Um so tight end is a little sp obviously pretty specific even though that position has become pretty vertical whether you're attached 
slot or up like a wide receiver. This kid from game one, his true freshman year, he started against the first game, I think it was against Clemson, and was a major part of the game plan right out of the gate. He is a stud. And we have seen Dalton from uh, Buffalo and even more Sam Laporta from Detroit. What rookie tight ends, the effect they can have. Michael Mayer from Notre Dame later in the season when they started using the tight end more in Vegas. What tight ends, the, the effect they can have in this league. Bowers is going to, whoever gets him, and it won't be as high as he should go where his talent is compared in this draft to everybody else. He'll go lower on that because of the position that he plays and the need. Uh, but I think this is a guy who right out of the gate is going to be unbelievable. Mike, are you surprised? Uh, Caleb Williams appears to be the guy who's going to yep. go number one overall. People think he's the best quarterback in the draft. Are you surprised that Jaden Daniels has risen this high on most draft boards? No, we've seen this before. I mean, we've seen a guy have a monster year and, and rise up because of it. And one of the differences is, and what I like about the guys we're talking about, who has failed as of late from the quarterback position? And it had been guys that hadn't had a lot of starts in the right. NFL, right? Yeah, uh, They get 13, 10, 13, 15 starts, and all of a sudden they're a high first-round draft pick. You know, now you know you look at the guys that have had a little bit of uh, – Like Zach Wilson? Yeah. 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 Zach Wilson, uh, mm -hmm. Mitch Trubisky. Yeah. You know, you start to look at uh, Trey Lance for, you know, had some time obviously of where he played, but not, not in the power five either. Um, so you look at the, some of the guys now, they have a lot of experience. Bo Nix has played forever. Jaden Daniels, remember, he started early on in his career in Arizona State. Uh, Caleb Williams uh, as well. So you have guys that have played. Michael Penix has played a lot, a lot of that due to injury as well. So you have a lot more guys, and I, and I wonder where that trend will be of backing off of guys who have a limited amount of starts even though they may look really good as opposed to guys who have played a lot in college and are a little more seasoned. So Jaden Daniels, listen, look, who just won the MVP? And what's a reason he won the MVP? Lamar Jackson won the MVP because he can throw the ball pretty damn well and he runs as good as a running back. Jaden Daniels is the same way. So this is where we are in the NFL if you can pull that off. If this, if this kid can continue to throw well – we know he can run. You always worry about getting hurt, but the times Lamar has gotten hurt, it's been in the pocket, not running. So that's why Jaden Daniels is is made the move he's made. And 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 I, the, the guy though to me still is Michael Penix. I just I just am infatuated with him and the way he throws the ball. Now, yes, right. struggled when there was pressure around him. We've seen that, but I've seen him do enough good things. Certainly, his medical history is not great. He's not going to be a guy that's going to hurt you running the ball. He's going to be a guy that's going to be in the pocket or slide in the pocket to make a play downfield. So, the athletic quarterback that can run and really hurt you. He, you know, he's at the shoulder, the two knees. Uh, it's been tough on him, but I still love the way he throws the ball. Uh, Mike, are you interested in a uh, in a game of rumor mill? Are you interested in 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 playing a game that you know? Sure. Just, yes. Okay. Absolutely. All right, good. All right. We're going to get to that in a second. Billy has some stuff on the NFLPA because they voted on best owners, best teams, <laughs> oh, best yeah. facilities. I'm excited about this. But before we get to both of those quickly, because we just talked about the quarterbacks and Caleb Williams and Jaden Daniels. What are the Bears going to do here? They have to trade Justin Fields at this point, right, Mike? Yeah, they're going to trade Justin Fields and they're going to draft Caleb Williams. I, I I think, you know, there's what we also call this season is lying season. A lot of things you hear yes. are just a lot of smoke being blown uh, to try and ac accomplish what you will want to accomplish. I think at the end right. of the day, listen, I like Justin Fields. I'd like to see what he can do, but I don't think the Bears at this point can afford to do that uh, twofold. Uh, number one, if it doesn't work, already we're hearing about next year's class not being as good as this year's quarterback class because the Bears have to be thinking forward, what are we going to do at the quarterback position? When we see a young quarterback come in and, and show sometimes look great, sometimes not so great, we're like not sure – and then we see a guy come in like a Caleb Williams who has this high rating and this high ceiling. You're, people are, they're going to, teams are going to bet on the untapped potential as opposed to we saw some of the highs and lows of a guy we already have. So, yeah, I think they're going to trade him. I really look forward to seeing where Justin Fields ends up and what's he going to do, what he's going to do, because I do like him. 
But I, I do not believe it's going to be any question at all. Chicago will take Caleb Williams. They might regret that, Mike. I'm with you. Like Justin Fields is really good. I think he's really good. But. He is. He is. Right. I, I just don't. You know what? Here's This is the thing, guys, is GMs are f- more afraid of what happens if we didn't take the right guy as opposed to if the guy that we did have worked out. <laughs> Ryan Bowles, and and I'm not just saying Ryan, GMs are scared to death of if you didn't make the move and that player turns out to be great. My God, you live with that for the rest of your career, right? We suck with Justin Fields. He had another social year. Caleb Williams is the offensive, you know, rookie of the year. You go, oh, damn. You know, we blew that one. (laughs) With the Jets, it's a way of life, though. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) We always take the wrong guy. All right, Billy, what do you want to get to first here? You want to go rumor mill? You want to go NFL PA voting? What do you want to do? Well, okay, Mike. So we have a number of things we can get to. We have the rumor mill, which is Mike EA's segment. We have the NFL PA voting on different aspects for different teams. And, Mike, this is very exciting. I have for you... Spotrax contract breakdown predictions for seven QB extension candidates. Oh, wow. So this is what they're saying wow. these seven QBs extensions should be. And then we can kind of judge what they are. If you want, I can give you the names of those quarterbacks first, and then you can decide if you want to play this game or not. <laughs> That's it. That would be an, I, obviously Dak Prescott is one of those. One of those. I, I, what does it say that he's he's in line for? So Dak, their project. I guess we're gonna play this game. Dak, he wants to play the game, Billy. Yes, <laughs> three, I want to play the game. Three years, a hundred and eighty million dollars. Wow! I, so I his contract's up. At, his contract's up after next season. They're projecting him at three years, one hundred and eighty million dollars. But they have to, Which would, because his number is too high to, right. to not redo a deal and spread it out over years to keep the cap number lower than what what it is. Right. <laughs> Dak. Wow. 60 million sixty million dollars a year for Dak. Wow. In this game. What, what's what's the next biggest quarterback that's looking for gonna get one? Ooh, there's there's some names on this list, Mike. We have Kirk Cousins on there, who some people think might well, be a Hall of Famer. That's not an extension though, right? Isn't his contract up? I mean, that's that's just a new contract, is it not? Uh sure, yeah, let's go with contract. that. Yes, yeah, it's a new contract. Regardless, contract. if it's re-upping or a new contract, they're just projecting yeah. what Kirk Cousins Listen. is going to cost the team here. And I love lying season, Mike. This is one of the staples of lying season. Yes. Go out on a tennis court and show everyone you can move around. I mean, yeah. that's it. Right? How about, yeah. <laughs> why, don't we, why don't we play the game this way, Mike? I'll give you the quarterback, and I'll okay. tell you the years that they're projecting, and you tell me how much it would be for. Love okay. it. Kirk Cousins, they're saying I play. 36. They're right. saying three years. So what would you give Kirk Cousins for three years? Three years that'll probably average 40 mil a year. So I'll say 120. I'll say 140. Mikey? Yeah, I'll go. I'll, go, I'll split the difference, 130. Huh. They actually have it at a hundred bargain for Kirk okay. Cousins. Yeah. Wow. yeah. Okay. Mikey, yeah. you go last there. You got to play like the price is right. Yeah, you got to go a dollar below Golick or a dollar above me. Yeah. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know if it was uh, right, right in there. the middle. You'd be a horrible <laughs> price is right player. You're right. All right. <laughs> All right. Next quarterback. Here's an interesting one. Baker Mayfield, three year projection. Wow. Three year projection, 60 mil. Wow. Ooh. Mikey? 75. Wow. I'm going to go uh, three years, $75 million and $1. Ah. <laughs> oh, you know what? I messed it up. It was four years. Four oh, years. Come oh, on. wow. That changes everything. It changes everything. Hold on. Four All right. Years, four years. Four years. <laughs> yes. $85 million. Four eighty-five. All right, Mikey A. 90. I'm going to go. Oh, wow. I'm going to go uh, four years, $90 million and $1. You got twins. They're projecting four years, one twenty for big. Yes, yes, yes. One, one yes. Is Price is right. Yeah. <laughs> All right, good for. Hey, I hope he. Gets I love it. Baker. Good for him. I yeah. hope okay. he gets every dime of that. Here's, here's one of Stugatz's favorites, Jared Goff. Four year projection. Oh wow. Wait, how how wow. he's early twenty nine. Oh, he's only twenty nine. Okay. Wow. Four year. Four, I want to go last on this one. I'm, I'm going to go 153. Okay. Very specific. Really? Four years, 153. I'm oh, going to go. Uh, so that, it was very specific. 153. Uh, I'm going to go four years. Dak was at 60, you said, right? Uh, four years, $200 million. Okay. Mikey? Uh, 
it, it might have been part of rumor mill. So I'm going to go four years, 180 million. Huh. Mikey nailed it. And he gets the bonus <laughs> thousand. Oh, he gets both showcases. <laughs> exactly. Nice. That. Yeah. <laughs> 45 mil a year for Jared Goff. Wow. Yes, but you cheated. Him. You had the information. Yeah. You know what? I, I completely forgot as we're doing this how much the salary cap went up. So, all right, I'll do yeah. better on this one. Okay. Okay. Now we have three guys left. We have Tua, Trevor, and Jordan Love. Who do you guys want to go to? Jordan Love. Let's say Jordan Love. He's going to be yes. the okay. thing. Yeah. Jordan Love, four year projection. Four year projection. I'm going to say a hundred and hundred and fifty five million dollars. Okay, man. What you got? Uh, I'll say four years. God, he had such a good year, such a he good did. second half. Um, I'm going to say four years, a <laughs> hundred and eighty million dollars. Okay, Mikey. Four years, a hundred and fifty. What'd you say? hundred and fifty? I said a hundred and fifty-five. A hundred and fifty-five and one dollar. Jerk. Oh wow. Okay. Huh. Jordan Love. Four years, two hundred million dollars. Wow. Oh my god. Are you wow. kidding me? Wow. <laughs> That's Aaron Rodgers money. Oh my god. <laughs> it's crazy. Let's do Tua next. Tua, four years. Wow. Led the oh, NFL in passing five. yardage. Four years, 250. <laughs> Ooh, this okay. is crazy. Mike, could you ever, like, if I told you back when you were playing, these were going to no. be the numbers. No. <laughs> oh, my God. Randall four missed years, out. Four years, 205. Uh, 205. Two Mike, what'd you say? Mike. I said Mike. 250. Mike, yeah, you're saying $5 million more than Jordan Love. Wow. Yeah. He led Man. the NFL in passing yardage. I know. I, mean, I know. That's why I'm saying 250. I'm going to go uh I'm going to go 251. 4 <laughs> years 220, so a bargain. Wow. It's wow. That is. Yeah. That wow. is a steal. Yeah. Really. It really. Is. Now. This pay is the big close one. attention to this last one. Trevor Lawrence, 6 years. Wow. 6 years. 6 years. Two hundred and sixty million dollars. Wow, Trevor Lawrence. All right, you six want me to go, Mike? Two eighty. I'm going to go six years, three hundred. This is insane. Oh, I went too low. I definitely went too low. Six years, three hundred mil. Okay. What did you say, Mike? I said two sixty, and Mikey, no. I said two eighty. Stugatz nailed it. Six years, three hundred million dollars. Yeah, yep. a projection yeah. for Trevor wow. Lawrence. Wow! Yeah. Wow! Never won a playoff game. <laughs> Good think. for them, man. Good for them. <laughs> this is awesome. At least Jordan Love won a playoff game. Yeah. I mean. How about it? <laughs> wow! This is insane. <laughs> All right, let's get to. Uh, you want to do get the rumor mill? Yeah, the rumor mill is great. I love sure. the rumor mill. All right. We have one minute for the rumor mill, I'm told. <laughs> Ooh, awesome. express let's, game. Let's, yeah. let's run through it. All right. Okay. According to the rumor mill, Kirk Cousins might not return to Minnesota, but there is a team that might take him, the Las Vegas Raiders. Wow. Wow. Mike, I like that. that, that would According to the rumors, the Mike. Rumors. It's would lying not, season. Keep in mind. Right. Would not shock me because I don't think the Raiders are going to go into the season with Aiden O'Connell as the quarterback. So wow. I, I, I can't dispel that. But you think the Vikings are going to go into the season without Kirk Cousins as their quarterback? I, I think they'd like to go in. But okay. they got to pay Justin Jefferson as well. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Wow. He plays the game well, Billy. I mean, mm -hmm. <laughs> but according to the rumor bill, the Vikings already have their replacement lined up. And it's Sam Darnold, according to the oh, rumor. Oh, God. What? Boo. Wait, so Boo. the Vikings the wow. Vikings are going to get rid of Kirk Cousins, who, according to Billy, is a first ballot Hall of Famer, and he's not wrong. He okay. Sign elsewhere. Before right. okay. the injury. Uh, before, sorry, Billy. Okay, but Sam Darnold to the Vikings is what you're saying? That's what they're saying. The rumor yeah. mill is saying I'm not saying it. Right, the rumor mill. Of course, I, I would never accuse you of saying no. that. Okay. Heard it through wow. the grapevine. They hired Josh McCown, who had a great working relationship with him, and they think Kevin O'Connell can turn him into something. Wow. The oh, guy wow. that should be happiest if Sam Darnold becomes a starter in Minnesota is Zach Wilson. That just another high pick jet quarterback that failed and was a backup somewhere for a couple of years before he was a starter again. He can follow that that uh, way. It, 
it would be great if Sam, if Zach Wilson, if this plays out, the rumor mill, and Darnold goes to the Vikings, Zach Wilson goes to an AFC team, they play each other in the Super Bowl. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Please let that happen. How about it? Jeez. You want another God, rumor? I hate, I hate them, of course. Dolphins related, Billy. Yes, please. According to the rumor mill, there's a certain running back that might be headed to Miami, and his name is Derrick Henry. According to the wow. rumor. Wow. They got, wow. You know what? I, I, it's his top choice. It's here's his top. the wow. thing. Why? I mean, why? And listen, I love King Henry, but you have other holes you need to fill. You have Mostert, you have Achan, and you have even Jeff. I think Jeff Wilson is there as yeah. well. Yeah. Um, Mostert led the NFL in touchdowns. I don't know why you would do that. I think you have other holes to fill. That's why they talk about Baltimore, too, with Derrick Henry. Baltimore's a leading rushing team in the league, and a lot of that is Lamar Jackson. I You have uh, – pick other – now they have less holes to fill. Uh, but still, I mean, you're pretty much set with your running game. Uh, Billy would love that, though, having Derrick Eric I just love a name. Care. Yeah, I like a name. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what else you got, Mikey? Uh, last and Mike, you're, and by the way, Golik is lashing. He's lashing out at people. Mike, you're lashing out at a rumor mill. I mean, it, yeah, that's true. Uh, you, you take it easy. On, take it easy on the rumor mill. It just Sorry. it's doing its job. It's creating things to talk about. That's yeah. all. Also, for the record, I want to keep. I want to keep Raheem also, just in case there's any question about that. Like, <laughs> that's nice of you. Yeah, well, team, done. Yeah, but, well done. Well done. He's he's a friend of the show, right? Yep. right. Yeah. And Achan, yeah. you want five running backs? Um, yeah. Achan. His, yeah. inter- his interview wasn't great at the Super Bowl. <laughs> That's how we judge who we want to sure. keep. <laughs> All right, you got any more rumors there? Sure. Uh, last week on the rumor mill, Billy and Mikey weren't here. We had Saquon Barkley possibly going to the Dallas Cowboys, Ooh. but we had the wrong team in Texas, according to the rumor mill. Now, Saquon Barkley linked to the Houston Texans. Wow. wow. That nice. would be a great get for them because you're talking about different, you know, there's a lot of running backs available and none are going to be tagged. I think Josh Jacobs still stays with the Raiders. You got our buddy Austin Eckler uh, is going to be a, gr- a great addition somewhere, I think, should be to like a contending team. Kansas I think, City. Yeah. I think Derrick Henry could end up with the Cowboys, quite honestly. Mm-hmm. Um, and Saquon Barkley, the best of both worlds there. He can run the ball. I didn't catch it out of the backfield. For a young, up-and-coming team like Houston, that would be an excellent get for them. Mike, all this shows just how interchangeable all these guys are. Yes. Or at least that's how the NFL views them. They're all interchangeable, which is crazy. To me, Austin Eckler makes the Chiefs so much better if they were able to land him, you know? Think of that. Austin Eckler, the way he catches the ball out of the backfield, Pacheco yes. running the ball. I mean, what a great one-two punch that would be. Yeah. Just got married, though, so we'll see if uh, you know the wife wants to enjoy Kansas City for a year or two. Or he's about to get married. He also didn't have the nicest things to say about Taylor Swift and that whole thing. So we're going to see if uh, Taylor allows him to play on the Chiefs, I suppose. All right, you have one more rumor for us? Well, it wouldn't be a combine week rumor mill without a couple of scouts saying some stuff. And according to the scouts on the rumor mill, they have Spencer Rattler rated above both Bo Nix and Michael Penix. Yeah, Spencer Rattler. Spencer Rattler was was on collision course coming into college to be the be the Caleb Williams of this of this class or whenever he was going to come out, and that's fallen off as he's moved a bit. You know, last up that was three colleges ago. Yeah. Exactly with South Carolina now. <laughs> um, th- there are things I like out of Spencer Rattler. I now I th- was so wild. It maybe just goes to show what everybody else didn't do in the Senior Bowl. He was the MVP and he threw four passes. In, in the senior <laughs> board, four for four. <laughs> and one that, yeah, I guess so. You were the top uh, rated D lineman and never played the position. Uh, so. Exactly right. It's exactly right. So who knows? Um, uh, we'll see. I mean, again, we're not going to tell a lot uh, uh, in shorts and, and, and a t shirt for sure. Uh, but if it makes people really study him and his film and what he does, there's going to be some. We know this, this happens every year, right? Well, there's going to be five quarterbacks taken in the first round. Two or three of them are going to be busts. And there's going to be quarterbacks taken from the third round third round on down to the seventh round who will be better than some of those drafted before him. This happens every single year. Yep, it does. Uh, Billy, you want to do the NFLPA with Mike real quick? Steve Spagnola going to join us. Spag's going to join us coming up here in a few nice. minutes, Golik. Yeah, oh, nice. that's man. your boy. <laughs> Listen, I love playing for Buddy Ryan's defense. I love playing for Bud Carson's type of defense. 
I would have loved playing for Spags defense, man. That is a that is a get you know they adjust well and eventually they get after your ass defense. I really I really enjoy his play calling. Well, I'll say this, Mike. We have very little time left. In fact, we're way over time. But I will ask you this: When you were in the NFL, did you? I guess this is done every year. The NFL players' team report cards. So they rank teams based yeah. on a certain mm-hmm. number of categories. Seven categories, I believe: treatment of families. Food, nutritionist, locker room, training room, training staff, and weight room, right. with the help, the hope that this will help potential free agents in determining where to go and to kind of, I guess, keep the teams honest in those categories. <laughs> so, of those categories, I guess which of which to you would have been most important as a free agent? So, there's actually eleven um, uh, as well, with head coach and owner in there. Um, to me, it would be you know, like I, I there are some I don't care about. Remember, we're, we're, we're making these college uh, uh, facilities great to entice the uh, 18-year-old to come there. Now, that's fading a bit. It's more about NIL. In the NFL, you're getting paid. You go work. Who cares what your weight room, re- weight room looks like, right? Um, you'd like your family to be treated well with a family room there. But the, but, and, but the thing about a training staff, you look at why Dallas dropped, I think, from 5th to 12th. One of the biggest complaints was the training staff. Now, by CBA, you have to have at least three on-site trainers there, and they're thinking now that's not even enough to get the kind of treatment that you need. Those are things I would be more concerned about, not what my locker room looks like, not what kind of food I'm getting, though those would be nice luxuries to have. Hell, I remember interviewing Takeo Spikes when Greeny and I were doing Mike and Mike at ESPN, and he was just hoping to get an extra towel for a shower when he was playing for the Bengals. A lot of the Fs in these categories you see now, these were A's in my day. I mean, uh, that's how different it is now. But not a lot of that affects what happens. Look where Kansas City was ranked in a lot of things and are back-to-back Super Bowl champions. So Last. Yeah, a la- exactly, <laughs> except for Coach. Andy right. Reid is right near the top. So, yeah, you would like to have a better li- you know, work environment area. But, you know, teams aren't going to jump to some teams will tweak and change some like Cincinnati not charging the younger players like or whatever team it was for their food. Or if you want a room alone on on the road, you have to pay extra. I mean, there's some really dumb stuff in there, but I don't think it's anything to deter a free agent who may get paid a lot of money from going there. Let's hope for Billy's sake it's important to Derrick Henry. There you go. <laughs> yeah, Miami ranked very high. They were the top. They were right. number one. Yes. Owner, everything. According yeah. to the rumor mill. <laughs> <laughs> this was according to a vote. This is the vote. Yes. This is a vote. Wow. Weaving two Miami. segments. I get it. I got it. I get it. All right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, Golik, you look refreshed because you're not, <laughs> we're not talking about football seven days a week anymore. So you I look know. Refreshed. Not yeah. prepping for games. Just getting right. to enjoy now. Uh, basketball and hockey and Notre Dame women's lacrosse beating number one teams in the country. So it's all great. <laughs> You're all, a great. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Good luck against Carolina this week, and I'm sure that will go well. <laughs> Goodbye, Steve. God, God bless football, Mike. God bless it all. <laughs> Steve Spagnola, defensive coordinator, Kansas City Chiefs, the greatest coordinator of all time, is joining us here on God Bless Football. What are you laughing at, Spags? You're the only uh, coordinator to win four Super Bowls, man. Well, I don't know if that constitutes that kind of accolades, <laughs> but, but I appreciate it. I do. That's more about the players than the assistant coaches I have, really. Uh, you just that's very humble of you. Uh, your your schemes are amazing, uh, but you're right. It's a, it's a player's league. Uh, you were just at the Combine, huh? Uh, yeah, I just got back. Uh, listen, we're, do, we're right back into it. I tell you what, it's like with the length of the season now with the 17 games and the Super Bowl falling where it does, you know, you don't get it. You don't really get a chance to breathe. Had a little bit of time down in Miami last week, but bang, here we are. It's on the next year. But that's the cycle of NFL football. Are you addicted to football, Spags? Seriously. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I guess. I mean, look, I still like the beach. I like to play golf. I like to hang with my wife. So it's not a total addiction. But, you know, I'm not sure you can be in this business and, and kind of do it the right way. I think we're all built like that. I mean, you, you kind of get married to it for eight months or whatever that stretch is, that grind. But I, I do enjoy it. I do enjoy it. Let me ask it differently. Is your wife tired of football? <laughs> yeah, she was probably tired of it a long time ago, but no, she, 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 she I tell you what she likes. Uh, 
uh, Stu Gatz. She she likes the relationships, you know, especially with the guys, the players. She very much ties in, and I love that part of it. I mean, we do a lot of things with the guys, and and then they, our guys know she loves them, and that's uh, that's a big part of what we do. They like you, but they love her, right? Exactly. That's. A, I'm, I'm going to use that quote because that's exactly <laughs> what it is. Like me, love her, and I don't blame them one bit. Well, I was reading some quotes from your players on this particular Chiefs team saying that Mrs. Spagnola is the key to the whole team, that she makes Ooh. the best Italian dishes that they've ever had. Is that is that indeed true? Well, can you blame them? I mean, look, anybody, everybody <laughs> likes a good Italian dish. Uh, no, she connects. Listen, she's a uh, she's a giver and a server. Um, and she does a lot of that. You know, she's a strong Christian woman, so she does a lot of that throughout the community and other communities. But but she loves to serve these guys because she knows they like it, and I think they appreciate it. So we do it as much as we can. We have a Friday deal where I'm, I'm bringing in. It's usually, you know, they love the banana pudding. That's the big one, and then. Saturday mornings, we would do a uh, the guy that got probably the biggest hit. We call it the Cram Award. He gets the big pasta dish. So that's what they're talking about. <laughs> but you're back from the combine. We see you're in the office. Walk us through that big board behind you. Who, who are we oh, thinking? What that's we, an amazing yeah, what we, board. Yes. What like are we a detective, like here? right? <laughs> what are Chiefs looking at here? I, I probably ought not have that on video, although nobody, I can't figure out what it is, so nobody else would be able to. That's the backdrop. Well, I'll be digging deep into that in the next next few weeks. Is that all the draft and free agency rankings back there? What is that, Spags? That, that's a little bit of everything. That's that's some defensive calls. Shouldn't be calls. showing us this. Some, we got it all up there. I'm gonna, okay, we, up, I'm gonna do one of these so nobody can read it. You should do that the whole time. Yeah, like one of those inflatable things outside of a Seven Eleven. You know? Yeah, right. <laughs> If you can figure, if somebody can figure that out, then give me a call. Me oh my God, that is so great, uh, Spags. I'm wondering because I see how close you and Andy Reid are, and I know you've known him for a long time. And so I'm just wondering, like, can you describe that relationship for us? What it what it started as and what it's grown into today? Yeah, great question. Um, if I take it all the way back to 1999 when Andy hired me, I mean, look at um, we're, we're we're the same age, kind of came up the same way through the college ranks, and then he jumped into the NFL with the Green Bay Packers and Mike Holmgren, and he just kind of took off because that's him. He's special. But, you know, so you start out as a quality control guy, and Andy had kind of, kind of a, a dip, different relationship. But we knew each other as, as friends and people in the business before he hired me. But thank God, I owe everything to him getting in the business. And then, you know, I mean, he just was really great, and he's always been this way. He is still this way to, to today. He's always promoting guys from within. He's always, you know, the guys he identifies as good coaches and people that he wants to keep. He just keeps, and he did that. I did that throughout his system in Philadelphia with Jim Johnson. And then, of course, after that, left to the Giants and the whole thing. And then for him to bring me back in 2019 was a huge blessing. Uh, we had always stayed in touch. I mean, we when we were head coaches together, when I was in St. Louis and he was in Philly, uh, I, and I think all the guys that work for Andy do this, but you become a head coach. The first guy you call with any kind of question is Andy Reid. You know, right. we're on the we're on the phone with him or texting back and forth. So that relationship always uh, was there. And then when I had the opportunity to come, I jumped on it, and it's been great ever since. He's a he's a special guy, John, in that he, he's rock solid. The guy is steady. Nothing rattles him. Uh, the players recognize that. I think the the staff and the players kind of echo that. And I think that behind the scenes is the biggest reason for you know the success that we've had. Spags, did you think at any point, because there were rumors flying around, did you think at any point that Andy Reid might retire after the season? I, I never felt that. I mean, nah. I, I think people are always going to ask that when you get to Andy's age and as successful as he's been. But he, he's got so much energy. Um, and this, you know, you you, talk, you asked me about if I was addicted to football. You yeah. ask Andy the same question. I think he'd tell you the same thing. He might be addicted to it. Uh, <laughs> but, but he loves it. And uh, you can see it every day when he comes in here. He... he he has not w lost one bit of energy, uh, not one bit of spark. I mean, you see how intelligent he is with everything he does offensively, and I just love being around him. I love working with him. What was your reaction when Kelsey bumped into him during, uh, you know, in the <laughs> right? Because he handled it so well, Andy. Nah, really he, he did. Yeah. Listen, those guys, they, they have a special relationship, and this isn't. But that's crazy to us, right, Spags? To you guys, that's normal. To us, it's on the outside, that's crazy. That's a right? good way to say yes. it. Look, there's right. always sparks flying on the sideline, and this thing's going on all the time. And, and typically, you know, the, the next day or even the, in the locker room after the game, that stuff is so just I, just gone. I mean, it's just, just part of the nature of the game. 
Uh, Mikey A and I were talking uh, before you came on here about you wanting to be a head coach. Well, Mikey A, go ahead and ask the question. All right? <laughs> no, you, you talked about how great of a coordinator he is, and, and you know the the next natural jump is to want to go back into that head coaching ring. Is that something yeah. you want to do? Is that something you're you're trying to get done? Well, look at uh, so I've answered this. I'll answer it the same way I have all the way through it. We all, I think, are built. I'm talking about coaches now um, the, the same way. Um, we all aspire to run our own show. I had the opportunity to do that in St. Louis. It didn't go great. Um, if you get a second opportunity, I think you're always better because you learn from your mistakes. We all do. When it, whenever you get one of these first time head jobs, there's no manual for all the things that you got to go through. You kind of learn on the run. So I think right. experience is the best thing. So would I do it again? Absolutely. But I always follow that up with saying, if it never happens again, I'm a blessed guy. I mean, listen, I leave that whole thing in God's hands. Just, that's just the way I'm built. I don't lose sleep over it. Um, I have a tremendous job right now. I work for the best head coach in the league. And so if it doesn't work out, that's okay. Would I want to? Yeah. And we'll see what happens. And if it works out great, if not, I'm a happy man. Spags, I was trying to make the argument that you're so great at what it is you do. And when you take on the responsibilities, all the responsibilities of the head coach, you are no longer focusing on, you know, stopping an offense. You're no longer focusing on your defense. And I feel like you're the best in the business. Why not just continue to do that on that team in particular? Jesus. Well, you bring up a good point, and it's probably yeah. why I'm able to sit here and say, look, if it doesn't work out, that's okay. But I think we're all built. We're prideful guys, right? We all are. You guys have been in athletics. All of you have been involved with it, and uh, we all want to win. We all want to aspire to be to the top and win at the, the most elite level. Um, so the, the drive is still there. Uh, but, again, if it doesn't work out, that's okay, too. You've been in Kansas City for five years. I was telling the guys right before you came on, that's the longest you've been in one place since 1987 to, two, to, to 1991, I believe, which was UConn. Like, you got to be yeah. tired of moving. <laughs> you mean as a coordinator? Yeah, that's yes, true. As a, right, uh, yeah. No, that's true, because I was yeah. eight years as an assistant in uh, Philadelphia. I, right. It's funny, I was just having this conversation with a younger coach who was asking for advice, and I did say to them uh, that I think – one of the things to do in this profession, if you're at a young age, is to do a lot of moving around. I believe that if you can rub elbows with a lot of people down the road, I think that helps you because they've seen you. They know your work ethic. Um, all, it's all about contacts in this league. It's probably no different than any business, right? I mean, I, I would assume the business you guys are in, you know, the next job you get is because somebody you know. So I think the moving around helps you. Now, I was fortunate, guys, that – You know, at the time I wasn't married, so I didn't have children and I wasn't, you know, you're not taking kids out of schools. I I get that sometimes when you have a family, you can't do too much moving, but it worked for me. um, And I I think that it's important when you're a young coach to do that. Uh, Now you have five kids, right? Is that? (laughs) <laughs> no, I, we don't have any children. We have uh, my my wife and I have adopted children, and they're now grown now, and they've got kids. So I'm a grandfather, you know, and that makes me feel old, but that's okay. <laughs> how many of uh, how many of the grandchildren, adopted children, how many of them wanted to meet Taylor Swift? How many of them met uh, Taylor Swift? Yeah, the, well, we keep that. That's a whole. That's uh, we keep that over on us. <laughs> <laughs> Your draft board's right in front of us, Bags. <laughs> the draft board is there for the taking, though. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Uh, Spags, Patrick Mahomes, all the years you've been in the NFL, of all the yeah. quarterbacks you have coached against or coached with, is Patrick Mahomes the best quarterback you've seen? Well, listen, he's certainly that right now. But, um, listen, Tom Brady, you know, we, we had to defend quite a bit. He's obviously the, the, one of the greatest it, it's hard to do that i think it's really I, I think you do that when everything's all done right and patrick sure. still has some years to go here and i'm just hoping he can keep staying on the same trajectory he makes us better every day i mean listen we have to practice against patrick every day him and andy and what they're putting together and you know it's a competitive deal that's what i love about what andy has here and we go out here for otas in another month and a half or whatever it's going to be um We'll be trying to knock each other. Well, they'll be trying to score on us. We'll be out trying to stop them, and it makes us better. I think that's one of the, the threads of what we have here uh, that keeps us going, getting better and better. Spags, you got a couple of uh, big-time free agents on your defense, Legereus Sneed possibly and Chris Jones. Yeah. How important is it to get those guys back? Yeah, I mean, from my perspective, guys, I mean, you, you know you 
I'm, I'm praying every day that we do get him back. I, I, I understand. Listen, I know the landscape of the NFL and sometimes it's tough to keep everybody because there's a cap and the whole thing. And I want, listen, I want all these guys to get paid. I mean, that's just the nature of what you do. You want all the guys that work for you, whether it's a coach or a player to excel, get the most they can out of uh, this profession in a lot of different ways. So, but, but from my perspective, I obviously want both those guys to be here. Uh, Spags, we'll get you out of here in just a minute here, and we do appreciate the time. Um, sure. The Super Bowl you won against Tom Brady. Uh, I, look, I know you, you value all the Super Bowls. They all mean a lot to you. Yeah. Is there one that kind of stands out because you stopped this legendary quarterback and legendary offense? And, and Spags, you should have won Super Bowl MVP. In fact, you should have won <laughs> twice. You should have won it this past year and the year that you beat the Patriots <laughs> with the Giants. <laughs> I, listen, I, I'm not sure any coach is an MVP of winning because it's still the guys uh, playing on the field, right? Right. But I, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what, Stu Gatz, that – that team that we did play in 07, that Patriot team, I mean, if I, if my brain can get back there, um, I mean, they were far ahead of the, the curve. I mean, they, they were spreading it out and throwing it to all the wideouts that Tom had. And that was it's the best team I've ever seen, Spags. It's the yeah, best team I've I mean, ever, like, yeah. if, you, if you just put it in context, um, I, I go, going into the game, quite frankly, and I've said this before, I, I was, if we could hold them under 30. I felt like that was a good game. That's how good. It was. <laughs> and I didn't. Right. I didn't know if we could do that. To be quite honest with you, but our guys rose up. Now, you know, I'm in the the middle of this one right now, and the feeling of the way the game. Th- this group that we had this year uh, was a special in terms of high IQ football players. I never had as many high IQ. I've had a lot of high IQ players. Antonio Pierce is a head coach now. Uh, Kelvin Shepard is coaching in Detroit. He was he was a Mike linebacker for me with the Giants. Jeremiah Trout, a bunch of them. And James Laronitis when I was in St. Louis. But as a as a total group of guys together, this was the most we had. And I think that more than anything, that and the way our assistant coaches conveyed game plans to them from a from an intelligence standpoint was the key reason why we were able to do what we did. And I thought it was special what the guys put together how they played through the playoff run and certainly what they did in the Super Bowl. I mean, I didn't like the fact that we gave up 22 points or 19 or whatever it was. I, I, I was hoping we could get that a little lower. But that that offense um, that San Francisco has, what Kyle does, the quarterback, I think, is tremendous. I think they did a really good job. It was a good game. Uh, you wanted to shut them out, didn't you, Specs? No, I, we always do, right? Always do. <laughs> You're not happy with your performance. That's it was an all-time know. performance by I mean, your defense, Specs. When you look at it, guys, the, 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 ultimate, the ultimate achievement for any defensive player or defensive coach would to be to have a shutout in a Super Bowl. I'm not sure you can you can get do anything better than that. So right. that's what we're gunning for. It didn't happen that way, but yes. that's what you're gunning for. Beating the best offense, we all you know, most of us have ever seen. That was is pretty damn good, Spags. You've done good, that, is what I'm trying to tell you. Yeah. Special. And by the way, when the Jets fuck it up, and they will, okay, and Salah gets fired, if you want to be a head coach again, we'd love to have you. Okay. <laughs> uh, all right, we'll see what happens. I, we don't we don't worry about that right now, but I feel you. Are you you guys? Are you not all Jet fans though, right? No, we you have two Jet fans, me and Mikey. Yeah, you have Billy, who's a Dolphin fan. So that's awesome. That's great. Yeah. I tell you what, when you got I Billy didn't... wasn't happy with your first round of the playoffs. I have to be honest. With nah, you are so. my favorite person. <laughs> Sorry about that. And that first, that first that first half that first half in Germany, I didn't like you very much either. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, it was cold that that playoff game. I'm telling you what, that was real cold, guys. And I knew yeah. it would be tough. For, we kind of got a the, the good Lord helped us that that game because I know it's hard to go from. South Miami, South Beach, and go play in Kansas City in minus 30. That's not easy to do. All right, man. Hey, uh, we appreciate the time. Uh, yeah. Next time we do this, Spags, I don't want to talk any football. I want to talk Italian food and drinking beer and playing golf, okay? I'm all for it. I'm all okay. for it. Okay. <laughs> all right. Hopefully you get one of those guys on the board behind you, right? <laughs> we'll pull somebody off. Pull somebody off. I appreciate uh, you guys having me on. It's a lot of fun. Thanks. All right. Thank you, Spax. We appreciate it, man. You got it. All right. All right.